shot. Have a look at Gibbs trying to go around the outside. He is on a mission right now. Oh, look at this. Beat. He's escaped the carnage. A battle of survival here in this first moto, and he has come out on top. Welcome to Adelaide in sunny South Australia for round three of the Penrite Pro MX Championship presented by AMX Superstores as our travelling motocross circus descends on the sandy loam of Gilman, a track brimming with memories of so many of our current and former riders and one that always delivers first-class racing. Hi, I'm Kate Peck and with me is 11-time national motocross champion Lee Hogan. Hogs, before we get into the racing, some massive news was announced on Friday. The FIM MXGP is coming back to Australia and it's heading to Darwin. Yeah, this is so exciting, not just for our sport, our industry, but also up in the Northern Territory, the tourism, it has so many good positives. It's, it's very cool. Now, in MX2, Brody Connolly is just extending his championship lead by a mile. Who can stop Brody Connolly? Well, it's the Brody Connolly show at the moment, isn't it? Uh, I think there's only really his teammate, Noah Ferguson, who has similar pace, but he just hasn't been able to string it together quite like Brody Connolly. So, as to whether he can do it here and keep doing it, that's another uh, you know circumstance. We're going to have to wait to see. And finally, of course, in MX3, Jet Allsop takes taking the round win at Horsham without taking a moto win, something I know he would love to correct this weekend. Well, everyone likes to win an overall with a moto win, at least one, maybe two. But you'll take it however you can, right? It's been such a long time since we've seen Jet out there on the track. He was injured. Uh, so good to have him back, though. Our current championship points leader, though, Kobe Hantis, he's got that red background, didn't have the best round at round two at Horsham. So hopefully he can get those wheels back on again. We'll see how he goes here. OK, we are going to head out for the Michelin track preview with your expert commentators, Danny Ham and Lee Hogan. Welcome to this week's Michelin track preview. We start here out of the start gate into the first turn. And what we've got here is one of the very rare opportunities for a dirt style starting grid throughout this series. We normally have the ultra grippy metal mesh starting grates. Now, if you have a bit of a close look at the dirt texture here, it will become that hard pack and you'll almost start to see blue groove marks from the tires left on this starting gate here and the riders have to get as much traction as they can before they launch out onto some super grippy dirt and that's where the dramas begin so we're only a handful of meters out the front of the starting gate and we are presented with some of the nicest dirt that you are ever going to find beautiful chocolate cake and it's almost bottomless. Now this throws a bit of a curveball to the riders and the teams when it comes to tyre selection. Do they choose the very popular scoop or paddle tyre that just throws this dirt backwards and throws the bike forwards in a very big hurry? Or do they go for something a little bit more hard pack, something that's going to get them off the starting line and not let those elbows come out and box you in and throw you out the back of the pack? That's a decision that they have to make. So we're gonna to have to watch this play out. Tire choice is gonna be critical. If you don't get yourself a good start on the opening laps here, you're going to be buried back in the pack. This particular dirt loses your vision very quickly. Position on track off the start, extremely important. Now this corner itself is a little bit of an off camber turn. Now on a hard pack track, that would be very difficult to get around. However, with this soil, you'll develop a lot of ruts through the turn and they'll continue to push wider and wider. And that's another thing these riders have to think about is they need to keep an open mind. This is an ever evolving track. These ruts will change. They will develop every single lap on the track. Now, if they're not paying attention, if they don't have their A game on, they're going to miss the good lines and it's really important that they get them dialed in if they have any chance this weekend of getting a top three position. We're standing here on the exit of turn six. Now, approximately the halfway point of a lap. Now, entering into turn six, we've got what's traditionally known as a gator back section. It's the very last opportunity that these riders are gonna to have to make a pass before they head up into the elevated part of the Gilman circuit here. 
Now, how they tackle this gator-back section, whether they decide to try to skim across the top, it's gonna be a long shot with how far apart they are from each other, or whether they try to rhythm. However, the last one is the biggest. So if you elect to single off that last one, you're gonna lose a bit of time and open yourself up for a passing opportunity here. Once the riders come down from the elevated section, there's only a handful of corners before that checkered flag. Well, that's this week's Michelin track preview for round three at Gilman. Let's take a look at the Pirelli Championship points MX2. Provisional, of course, Brody Connolly at the head of the pack there, 97 points. Noah Ferguson with 71, quite a large gap back. And Ryder Kingsford there on 65. So second and third place, still plenty to play for. Yeah, second and third, but look at that from fourth, or well, third all the way through to 10th. There's only, uh, what's that, 19 points between all of them. So it just shows how up and down a lot of the results have been for a lot of these riders. Let's take a look at the Pirelli MX2 lineup here for Moto One. Brody Connolly, Caden Minia, some of the biggest names in MX2. Alex Larwood, Reed Taylor, Byron Dennis. Kingsford back there. Mather, Rhys Budd, who looked pretty strong early on. Riley Fitzpatrick, that's a good one for him. Top 10 in the qualifying. Bailey Malkowitz, someone that knows how to ride this track. Benny Novak, Jace Cosford, we spoke about earlier on the starting line. But Ricky Yokoyama's had some great results lately on board. Yeah, he has been a fast. Brock Flynn, we saw a great start at the last round with him. So he has potential to get himself a whole shot. However, a 21 start gate pick, that'll put him in the mid gate. So he's certainly got his work cut out for him if he does want to get that whole shot. All right, we uh, only moments away here from the drop of the gate. Pirelli MX2, Moto1. Who's going to grab that whole shot? Riders are starting to get amped. They're starting to get fired up. It's go time, and these points are critical towards the championship. Five second board up for Pirelli MX2, Moto1. Revs are up. Let's go. Brody Connolly oh. by about a bike length. Wow, but a. Yes, he's managed to hold it. Wow, what a call. Kata Minia, though, right there beside him. He is going to look for something around the outside here. Ferguson has got himself a good start as well. There is Reed Taylor, the whole shot, WP whole shot award. Brody Connolly, what a way to start the day. So our fastest and second fastest in time qualifying are right up there in that same position. Does Noah Ferguson have the speed to go with these guys, to stay with them? Looking back through the field, oh, a mistake there by Haruki Okiyama. Both feet off the pegs. We'll go down a little bit. That was in eighth place next to Jace Costa. Jack Mather is also beside him. As we see, a line around the outside here. Fort Minia, good run up here to the inside. He could potentially run very deep into this corner and get this pass made. Not quite. Connolly sweeps in. Yeah, did you see the speed that Connolly swung around the outside? He hit the nail on the head with that. So Connolly showing that he means business here today. A little sniff at the lead there for Minia. Would be a good thing for him to see Taylor to the outside going through the Honda right-hander. He is looking to make some passes. That Larwood there as well. Yeah, so there it is. Taylor Larwood sits there behind Ferguson. Larwood to the outside through Yamaha. Oh, it's a good run. Nice run around the outside slots in between both Noah Ferguson and Reed Taylor. So our uh, very, very fast qualifier, Brody Connolly, is out at the head of the pack, but he is still under a little bit of siege from Caden Minia. Only Ooh. 0.5 of a second between those two riders, but have a look at this battle. Yeah, and oh no, down. Oh! Uh, is that right. Haruki it is? Yeah, it? Haruki Okiyama. Oh, that is a shame. He actually made a couple of passes to get into that position, so that is a shame for him. Around the outside, Taylor looking to make a pass on Ferguson. It's a long way around here, though, Lee. Yeah, now, you know Noah Ferguson as well as I do and how fast he is. His sprint speed is incredible. Do you think he's pumped up a little bit in these early stages? Look, I think it's just these riders need to come to grips with a new track, basically, as we said before. They don't know the lines. They need to learn them on the opening couple of laps. And first, a rider like Ferguson, who you oh. see, oh, so strong. Oh, that's Cannon. That is Charlie. Oh, no. She's holding her right arm. Now, is that is that shoulder, is that wrist? She is she able? Okay. So she's lifted the bike. Oh, that's that looked bad. That looked like she'd done. Okay, let's go. watch close. 
to the inside here. Already peak oh. off. Already, oh, and whipped into the ground. And is that Byron Dennis? No, the 23, 23 machine. No, sorry, Byron Dennis is old, no, old number. It looks like Connolly might have had a pretty clean lap this time around. This is going to be a real test for Minia. We know how good he is in these conditions. We, uh, we know that he's coming back from the injury from last year. Uh, it does take a while to get back to that race pace. And right now he's sitting pretty comfortable. But Lee, do you think that Minia is going to be able to have that race pace at the end of the moto? We've seen it proven already by Connolly that it is there. Yeah, I think Cade Mini has got the fitness to be able to do it. We've seen that since he was a junior, right? He's definitely got the fitness. I think the true tale is going to be, and only he would know inside his helmet at the moment, is he at 101% to try to stick to the back of Connolly at the moment? We've seen this so many times with what Jet Lawrence is doing in America and how he's controlling the race at the head of the pack. And that plays out as you get to the three-quarter part and the latter part of the race. And that's what I think is going to really tell the tale. Is Caden on his absolute rev limiter now just trying to keep uh, on the back of Brody Connolly? Having watched a fair bit of that last lap, I do think, though, that they've got completely different parts of the track where they're strong. I agree with that. Connolly does look very good at the moment. Minia was the one that was searching around for some different lines. So they go through the Fox left-hander here. Connolly, that was nice. Nice and soft in the corner. Didn't bury the bike and get stuck into that soft dirt. That is pretty much what he was talking about, getting into that really loose stuff that bolts the bike down and slows that momentum up. But Connolly, right around there. Is that Matha? Yes. Yeah, so Jack Matha down had what? some kind of drama is that a bike drama has he had a tip over that's not good for the teed up husky rider that's for sure yeah so where he was sitting it would almost suggest that, that was a bike issue beautiful run around the outside there he's got himself a bit of yeah. a gap now yep. and he's got two and a half second gap now and that's where it becomes a little bit of an issue let's watch in the background this yep. right hander we can see gabrielle Oh, OK, oh, so, yeah, and you can see how wide that line pushes. It almost goes right into the Gabrielle banners there. Yep. He just hasn't uh, identified how wide that's pushed, and that looked like a little bit of a front wheel washout almost. So. Race leader, around 12 minutes to go. We are half race distance, and are we starting to see the mid-race maybe take a breath and just get back into a more relaxed rhythm, Lee, as we see the lap times just drop back a couple of seconds that last lap for the entire field. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Brody Connolly's bike setup this year. I don't know if you've picked any differences, but for me, watching him through last year when he's trying to compete against Wilson Todd, his bike sat a lot lower in the rear end. It's sitting up a lot higher in the rear end. Now, for a lot of people, that gives you an unsettled feeling. I know if you listen to Villapoto or, or Ricky Carmichael, they always loved a low rear end and a high front end and they would just steer with the rear end. If you watch Brody Connolly's bike and how it's working so far this year, I've seen it at Wanthaggy at Horsham and once again here today it's sitting higher in the stroke. If you can get a bike to do that it's a lot more plush in that nice initial part of the stroke and I think it's working it's exceptionally well for him. If it sits a little higher in the rear, it also likes to tip into corners a little bit better. Connolly now, 7.26 seconds lead over everyone else. Larwood there in second place. Ferguson, 1.4. He keeps looking like he's going to get up there and battle it out, but just hasn't been able to close it down. Kate, what you've got? Just speaking to Honda about Alex Larwood and obviously, you know, his race and bike fitness is probably not where he'd like it to be and whether he can maintain his speed. Um, and they said that he's ha he can, he's found flow and he's not overextending, so he should be able to hang on to this P2. Certainly something that we have questioned considering the time that he has off the bike. One thing to get out there, do your practice, do your training, be uh, fit, but race fitness is a different story. So. Happy to hear that, and it is showing at the moment. However, down to 0.9 of a second, for second and third between these two here. Pretty good run, Lee, 400 at the moment, one, two, three. But do we see Ferguson push it through here? Can Lawood hold out? Will the fitness be enough? Thirdly, Ferguson. Oh, that nice. was nice. Standing up, barely even touched a rut or a burn through that corner. Manages to find grip. Now, we saw him. Go to the left here and square it up to the right. Will he run the berm this time? Yeah, it's still inside that berm, though. 
and he closes right down again through this part. So this is a strong part of the track for Ferguson. And it seems up the back. Oh, Ferguson with a good drive out there. Yeah, that a little bit wide going into that left hand. And now beautiful lineup wow. inside. That was forced. That was great. There was nothing there for Ferguson to turn off. There's that double over, not quite getting it right all the way. But Ferguson, man, he was, that was, you know, I don't want to say that was almost guaranteed, but Larwood's been running. Oh, Larwood, though, oh, did he just come back to the inside? I, think he, I almost guarantee you. And here we see the pass about to be set up here on the inside. Well-executed pass by Noah Ferguson. Comes out not too rude, but just uses up the real estate. Now, I am almost certain that that pass was paid back in spades. So, oh, here we got it. Oh. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is the right spot. So into this corner, Ferguson too wide, Larwood just to the inside there. So That was nice. So my my uh, my comment about it, that was almost guaranteed, Larwood is not rolling over. No. He is not rolling over. So when we come back to this, let's see. Hopefully, we've still got this battle going between these two. Once we pick them back up again, this is Minia. He has managed to hold onto that gap over Taylor. Ferguson back in front. Right, okay, so a little bit of a seesaw battle, but we didn't see that last pass, but what I can say is they have kept it very clean, haven't they? Yeah. It's been aggressive, but there is no reason at all that either Ooh. of these riders, whoa, that was, he nearly got jacked over the handle pass. Yeah, it's not what you want when you see the last lap board after all that work. So, Ferguson. We called it at the start of the race that he would be strong at the end, and he has once again proven that fact as we go to our race leader. Brody Connolly sits 7.8 seconds in front of the rest of the field. Absolutely flawless in this race. Had a little bit of pressure early on with Minia, but he has kept it clean. Sitting inside the rut just there, staying out of any of that deep stuff that could slow him down. And he's been doing it so easy at the moment, Lee. Yeah, uh, see where he was aiming to go there? It slid out a little bit, but where he was trying to go, beautiful line. So creative, missing all those bumps to the left. So I think when you've got yourself an eight second lead over your teammates, and you've got this kind of a points gap, your brain works in a different way. You're a little bit more calmer. You see things coming up quicker. You spot if a ride has crashed in front of you or a line changes. And that's what we're seeing with Brody Connolly at the moment. He's spotting stuff on the track that the other riders are not spotting. To the top end of the track. With a shot left-hander here before he drops back down into view for the majority of the crowd here. Beautiful day at Gilman. The sun is shining through the Honda rides. The Honda rider himself, Brody Connolly, has shown a clean set of heels today. Great start. Gets himself the whole shot and has not been challenged since. There were some riders that were close enough to put that challenge in, but no one has been able to answer the speed that we've seen and the smoothness that we've seen out of this rider. Even during those early laps, Danny Reed Taylor gone down just picked that bike up. Now, uh, has he lost a position? We're not quite sure. However, coming out of the final turn, up and over to receive the checkered flag and taking the win in Moto1 of the Pirelli MX2. A dominant ride from our dominant racer in this championship at the moment, Brody Connolly, doing it for the Polyfloor HRC Honda team. Let's have a look at Pirelli results, MX2 Moto1. Brody Connolly with the win from Noah Ferguson and Alex Larwood. Minia held on 4-4. Dennis Taylor Kingsford there in seventh. Cosford in eighth. Brock Flynn, good ride by him in ninth place. Campbell Williams there in 11th. Ryan King 12th. Ricky Okiyama, Olanda, Barham, O'Bree, and Jack Mather back in 17th. After that small tip over, so he was back a little bit further than he wanted to be. Unfortunate for him. Riley Fitzpatrick up there, 21. Jacob Sweet there in 24. Good to, see, good to see Emma Milicevic up there as well in 31st place. OK, let's head down to Kate Peck, who is with our winner. Yes, in P1 on the polyfloor, Honda, Brody Connolly. Uh, whole shot, you just checked out. You look pretty flawless out there. Talk us through your moto. Uh, yeah, it was a decent moto. Uh, got off to another great start. I think that's our four from five whole shot, so that makes it a lot easier. Um, I think I need to change a couple of things for this next moto. I was a little bit uncomfortable, got a little bit tight, so... Hopefully make a couple of small adjustments and then the next one will be even better. 
Okay, well, don't know how much better you can do than a win, but uh, well done. We'll see you in the next moto. Thank you. When we come back, we have got MX3 moto number two. Stick around. Max's Tyres MX3 class has been an absolute revelation here in Australia for Pro MX. And what it does is it combines our two oldest age brackets for juniors with our two youngest for seniors. It's created so many good battles out there on the track. Danny Ham, what's your thoughts? Yeah, look, I have to agree 100%. This particular class has shown us, one, the most exciting racing that we see all the time at our rounds. But the real point of it is to get some experience for these younger riders to develop their skills and be ready when they get into the senior ranks. And I can tell you what, there's some young guys that are really showing their hand against the senior riders. All right, well, let's have a little bit of a chat with some of our big hitters of the MX3 class. Kicking things off with our championship points leader, Kobe Hantis riding for the WBR Yamaha team carries the red plate in what is his first year as a senior. Just looking forward to doing the same thing I've been doing the last few rounds, just try to keep it a bit consistent and yeah, have a bit of fun. It does get stressful, but it's not too bad. It's, the environment's pretty good. The track here is awesome. It's quite loamy and uh, looking forward to getting out there and yeah, getting amongst it. Only six points back and tied in second place. Cade Kingsford is ready to close down that gap. Uh, for myself, hasn't been the, the best first two rounds, but still stoked to be in second, and uh, hopefully we can progress from that and move forward in the rest of the championship. It's a long series, so we're just going to take it round by round and uh, hopefully progress and end up with the red plate at the last round. Currently tied with Cade Kingsford for points overall, Jet Alsop finds himself third place in the points on board the factory KTM machine. I had a pretty bad injury just before the Toowoomba round of Pro MX last year and it put me off the bike for a solid six months, which was a pretty boring six months and um, I definitely don't want to do it again, that's for sure. One of the highest placed junior riders in the field is Seth Shackleton, currently seventh place, riding for the BCP Haas Honda Junior Development Team. It gets challenging sometimes racing like the older people with a bit more experience, but yeah, it's been fun. I've now got the speed to run up the front, so just gotta get the starts. Well, there you have it. Great to have a bit of a chat with some of our superstars of the MX3 class. Who's your pick for the podium, Danny? Look, it's so hard to say with this one. The strength we've seen out of the Yamaha riders so far this year has been pretty impressive. Jet Olsop, I think he did something special here last year, but again, that's the beauty of this class. It is too hard to pick. These kids have got so much talent, and it's really an unknown every single round. All right, well, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we can see maybe one of the juniors pop up onto that top step of the podium here at Gilman. Two motos, 20 minutes plus a lap, who's got it? And already straight back into the start line for moto number two is the MX3 kids. And we saw some fantastic racing off the bat here in moto number one. We check out the highlights right now. And it was the 621 off Deacon Pace that put himself up the front nice and early. A few key riders though going down in that first turn lead. Yeah, it was a great launch out of the gate for Deacon Pace, but a massive yard sale in the first turn. We had a pile up on the inside and the outside, but how about the charge from Jake Cannon? Yeah, so right now at this point, watch to the outside here and a bit of a swing in. This is very close, but Kate Kingsford makes the pass around the outside, puts himself into the lead, and then we talk about Jake Cannon right now, does the complete opposite on Deacon Pace, puts himself into second place, and this would continue all the way to the end, this battle between these riders. Yeah, it really was an impressive charge from Jake Cannon right the way through the pack that found himself all the way up in first place. But here we saw Jet Allsop, Danny. Now, you got a little bit of information about Jet Allsop, don't you? Yeah, we'll touch on that in just a moment. A bit of an in-swinger problem there for Allsop coming off that jump. But Jake Cannon was the eventual winner on this one. Allsop was battling it out all the way to the very end. 
it sounds like he went down in the last turn, potentially could have a broken collarbone. It's not confirmed. I did talk to someone, but yes, yeah, certainly a bad way to finish this. As we look at the Maxxis tyres, MX3 lineup, so many fast riders in this one. Lee, who's your pick to get the whole shot in this one? First of all, before I answer that, can I just say such a tragic story for Jet Allsop, who's had such a horror run of injuries. Jake Cannon, number three. There we go. That was my pick for the whole shot. Well, Kingston got out pretty good up the inside, but it looks like 44, but running extremely wide. Couldn't pull it up. And it's going to be Kate Kingsford up the inside that will get this one. Deacon Pace slots himself there in second. Sonny Pelli Pelicano. WP whole shot award, of course, going to Kate Kingsford. Fantastic run into that first turn. Yeah, and you called it Sonny Pelicano, the WA lad. So he had some really good times in qualifying. And he's out here with a great start in MX3 Moto 2. Big move right there for Jake Cannon. Slots himself into second place. Actually tried to double that jump. We haven't seen too many riders attempting to get right over that one. And it has allowed him to get straight into second place. Now, this was a great battle between these riders here with Cannon eventually coming out on top after Kingsford had a little tip over in Ooh. the lead of Moto number one. That mistake there might be enough for Cannon to get up and pass. We'll have a look in the background. Not quite just yet, but he is up the inside going off the top of that jump. All right, setting up a pass, and he does have track position here. He could have been rude, but there we see Kate Kingsford knew the pass was made. We're only in the first lap here. It would be silly to jeopardise your track position at this stage, wouldn't it? Yeah, early days in this, you don't want to do anything silly and end up on the ground. Otherwise, it is a big, long fight back. And the guy there that sits in fourth now, he can tell you all about that in moto number one, as he was one of the riders that went down early uh, in the first turn and had to work his way back from quite a long way. So keeping the uh, unfortunate form that he's had over the last couple of rounds, that there, of course, is the 94 machine of Kobe Handers, our championship leader. Uh, going into this round, running the red plate. He has had an off race and an absolute blistering race at each of the rounds so far. And it looks like we're seeing something similar today. Can he, though, get up there and run with the pace that we're seeing at the front of these two? Yeah, but it's uh, we've seen so many of those moments today, haven't we? From even just watching our MX1 just prior with Kyle Webster and Jed Beaton, a little bit of a uh, a little bit of an oversteer, shall we say, as the back end of Jake Cannon oh, no. bike steps out. That was all front wheel there. Unfortunately for Kay Kingsford, might only lose one spot, but no two, maybe three. You got to think you're going to be a little gas now. You're breathing a little bit of arm pump. Oh, and. Jake Cannon there just needs to have a little bit of a deep breath, settle down. You're in a good position, son. We're good to go. Watch the front wheel on the number 20 machine. Doesn't quite pick up the rut just the way he needed it to. Just turned it in a little bit too tight, washing out the front wheel. Now, Danny, tell me, does that look like, see how that line heads to the outside? Does that look like one of those creative lines where you try to turn off and find good dirt and no bumps, and that line's gone bad? He just, the front wheel tried to stay in the original line. Yeah, Kingsford to the inside again. Great line through there as we see the fastest lap is a 208.8 for Jay Cannon on lap number two. We're on lap three, of course. So he is starting to find some speed early in this rate. As to his Kingsford, maybe that little tip over by Kingsford has uh, lit the fire in the belly at the moment. As we see yet another rider come into the pits. There is a lot of those today. That was, uh, I think that was Jack Kenny on the 132. You can see the mechanic for whatever issue that was. Here is the pass lead. All right, let's watch him through up the inside. Cade Kingsford past his teammate. Beautiful clockwork. Very, very nice. Of course, he's trying to make up some ground lost in that earlier crash. KDM group, right hander, virtual. And he push up and battle hands for that next position. That'll be a top five for him if he can make that pass. What type of training do you think these kids 
could be doing it at home to keep that energy up a little bit higher? Is it is it more on the bike or is it more off the bike stuff? Well, I think it's a mix of everything, right? Anything that's going to get that heart racing, but it's got to be done over the time period that you're trying to do. And for on the bike stuff, you need to be doing these long motos. As we see, just going to the outside there, this potentially, no, not quite close enough. Kingsford certainly had the upper hand over the lows last couple of turns. And looking to the oh. inside here, what a line. Oh, that was that was beautiful. Turned on a dime and just ducked up the inside. And a little bit like Jed Beaton or where Jed was trying to find. I think a 250, a bit easier to just pop that bike up and into a line that you're trying to find. But that was great. It's almost like he turned off the first part of the berm, popped up and over the rut, and then just drove through that beautiful yep. dirt. Uh, just getting, you know, here we go. Let's have a look at this. So from the outside here, he sets himself up. Oh, no, this is the moment between yeah. them. Yeah, Deacon Pace was all over the place coming into that corner. Very lucky not to uh, have that escalate into something worse. But I think at that point, Kingsford knew that he has the opportunity to make that pass because he could see that Pace was struggling just a little bit over those last couple of laps. It's not until the next corner that uh, we would see that pass finally being made. Seth Virtual has uh, taken a little bit of a digger here as we approach the last lap board. Unfortunately, sneaky little look over the shoulder there of Deacon Pace. Let's see if we can pick this up here. That's, that's Hantis. That's Hantis. So here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that was, was a it. Nice little reverse scorpion there for Seth Virtual. Ducking out of the way, almost getting cleaned out. Yeah, great view there. It was a pretty pretty hard hit. Sometimes it's funny, like you can have the smallest of crashes and come away with an injury. And sometimes you can have the biggest of crashes, the biggest of hits, and get up like there is absolutely nothing wrong, like you're some kind of he-man. But uh, a big hit. He's up and going again. Unfortunate for him, certainly a day that he's going to want to forget because uh, he had a bit of an issue in the first one as well. But uh, he'll pick up whatever points he can. But that has allowed Pace to get back up into fourth place. And he keeps tying with people for the overall position on the day. Apparently, he's equal points with Kobe Drew, who sits in front of him at the moment, 38 points apiece. And uh, on the count back, it'll be Drew that's awarded the official third overall on the day. So last lap board is out now for Jake Cannon into the first turn what a display of riding it has been 13.3 seconds the gap back to kate kingsford in second place who despite a little tip over has been a fantastic day for kate kingsford hasn't it look this has been a very solid ride by kingsford yes the first one was disappointing he was up there and then after his crash he didn't seem like he rebounded all that quick however this particular one he certainly has pushed his way back through to get himself into that position and well deserved too this is a ride that uh, you know that you need those points and he has done everything right to get himself up there. So not the win today, but look, it's a solid ride. He'll take a lot of confidence out of this moving forwards and still will be a contender in the upcoming rounds. Yeah, Jesus, there's just no um, denying that lap time speed in qualifying. Two seconds faster than everyone else in the field. Super impressive. But talking about super impressive and almost having to take a double take as he looks over the right shoulder, just checking. Are we sure? Is there no one behind me? Can I just cruise this thing on in? Well, yes, mate, you certainly can cruise this thing on in. And you're going to score yourself a double victory here at Gilman. What a day it has been. And this is the shot of confidence that he needs going into Maitland, our next round, round four of the championship, because he has proven to us time and time again that he can ride any surface. So the championship points is 10 points between the top four in this championship. And this guy, if he continues this, is going to close down that gap pretty quick. He's still a long way behind, but when you ride a race like this, you have a weekend like this. That championship is well within your grasp. A great win there for the number three of Jake Cannon, moto number two, and you can see just how excited he is about that win. We look at the Max tyres. MX3 Moto number two results. Jake Cannon, Kate Kingsford, Kobe Drew, Deacon Pace, Kobe Hanson, so you're a top five. Jackson Fuller there in sixth, our first place junior through. Great job. Caden Strode there in seventh. Seth Birchall, Seth Shackleton, Jack Deverson rounding out the top ten. A couple of uh, juniors up there, three juniors. That's a pretty good effort up in the top ten of a very, very competitive MX3 class.
Sonny Pelicano in 11th after a great start and, and really good early laps there. Travis Lindsay from Will Carpenter and Reuben Smith. Let's head down to Kate with our winners. Kobe Drew in P3 for the round. Uh, congratulations. How was it out there? It looks pretty bumpy. Yeah, very challenging. Um, it's been a, a little bit of a struggle all day, but um, felt really good that moto and just kind of brought it all home and lucky to get it on the box and feeling good and ready for the next round. Yeah, 100% important championship points. Yeah, it's good. Good, good. OK, we'll head over to P2 for the round. Cade Kingsford. Uh, excellent return uh, after that little tip over. It was a shame to, to lose the lead, but um, you got back through the pack. Yeah, I mean, Jake, we were battling out front pretty quick and uh, felt like I had the pace to run with him, but I unfortunately tipped it down again. But got back to second and 2-2 uh, two -two on the day, so I can't really complain. Okay, well done. Thank you. See you at the next round. See you in Maitland. And Jake Cannon, congratulations. Return from injury, uh, a round win. You've just got to be so much hard work, I imagine, has gone in behind the scenes. It was such a serious injury that you went through. So um, huge congratulations. You must be thrilled. Yeah, I'm so happy. Uh, it's been a long road. So I have went back and trained after Horsham on my fitness mainly because that's what I was lacking. But, um, yeah, I'm just stoked. How is your bike fitness feeling? How's your race fitness feeling? Obviously, you know, you were running a pretty quick pace today. Uh, yeah, heaps better. I mean, I knew I had to get a, put a few sprint laps in at the start because these boys come at the end. So, um, yeah, I'm happy with how my bike and everything is and the team's awesome, so. OK, we'll see you at Maitland. Thank you. Oh, I'd like to thank Terra Firma, Froth, Uri for their help. They are a massive part in this, so thank you. Fantastic performance by all three riders here and really looking forward to how they all perform when we do get to our next round in Maitland. That there concludes the MX3 for today. We still have the MX2 to come, but before we get to that, Lee Hogan got a chance to catch up with Alex Larwood after returning from some injuries. Well, Alex Larwood had a pretty good first Moto here today in Gilman. We have the MX2 Moto2 on the line, getting set for their final race of the day. Don't go anywhere. We're here with Alex Larwood, Froth Honda HRC rider and local South Australian lad. Alex, you've had such a long distinguished career with Yamaha, six, seven, eight years, and we've come across to Honda for 2024. Can you tell us a little bit about the bike? Was it all you dreamed it would be and more? Uh, yeah, it's been a really good transition, um, gelling really well with the bike and also I'm loving the team environment. Okay, cool. Now, you've had a bit of a horror run with injuries, unfortunately. Now, I was speaking to you in recent days, trying to wrap my head around them. I know we've got a couple of back-to-back -back shoulders that had to be reconstructed. You had a tibia, there's all kinds of stuff. But there's one in particular <laughs> that I couldn't wrap my head around the pronunciation and the way you said it, uh, nerve damage, where you couldn't even feel your arm as a result of one of those shoulder injuries, yeah? Yeah, so it's called a break, brachial plexus injury where oh, I stretch a nerve system in my left shoulder and unfortunately I couldn't move my shoulder for quite a number of months but thankfully that all came good and then I had uh, two back-to-back -back shoulder reconstructions and then my fibula at the start of this year so it hasn't been the best run but I keep holding me head high and hopefully there's a good run after this. Well after such a distinguished junior career we're looking forward to seeing you get this Honda back up in the top step of the podium. Best of luck here at Gilman. Thank you very much. Well, if Brody Connolly's bike's going to be even better and they've made some improvements this time, I don't know what was wrong with it in the first one, that's for sure, because it was spectacular. Yeah, well, he said it, he didn't feel that comfortable. It looked like it was fine for us. As we looked at the MX2 lineup, Moto number two, Brody Connolly, Caden Minia, Alex Lowood, Reed Taylor, Byron Dennis, Noah Ferguson, K, oh, sorry, Ryder Kingsford, I keep messing them up, I apologise, Jack Mather, Reese Budd, and Riley Fitzpatrick was the top 10 in the qualifying. Bailey Malkowitz, Benny Novak, Jace Cosford, Haruki Okiyama, Campbell Williams, Caleb Barham, the list goes on. So much talent in this class. Brock Flynn was also pretty solid at the end of that moto. He did qualify 21st today. However, the results in the first moto were very, very good. So expect to see him up there with another pretty good start 
as we get set to get moto number two of the Pirelli MX2 underway. All the riders have been out, checked out the track, trying to figure out those lines that are going to work best for them. Revs are up. We are set to get the final of MX2 Moto2 underway. Another and great start. For another good Brody. start, but he's not going to get no. it. Minia has pinched him off at the turn, but Connolly is right there as well. Two riders down. That is, is that, that was Noah, Ferguson? Noah Ferguson. Ferguson down in turn number one as to Jack Mather. Oh man, he is having a bad time at it, isn't he? Mather, he's always been so fast, but just doesn't seem to get these opening laps sorted out. So, WP Whole Shot Award going to Caden Minia, the 66 machine we saw very quick in moto number one until that small tip over took him out of that number two position. But already, Connolly, he's menacing back there in second. Double, double, wasting no time at all. Into the Fox left and straight into the lead. Well, what a passage of play there from Brody Connolly. He didn't like being back in second place, and he has dropped the hammer. Here's a good battle. Caleb Byron with a much better start. Finally puts himself there in third in front of Byron Dennis. Then we see Reese Budd. We didn't see what happened to Reese Budd in moto number one, but he was a long way down at the finish of that race. So much better performance off the start this time. Taylor is there as well. Cosford, Larwood, Yokiyama, they're all up the front this time. All right, so we need Kate Minia to just try to throw a hook under the back of Brody Connolly. Try to keep tabs on the factory Honda rider and see how long he can stay with him for. This track is just getting more and more beat down every lap that goes by. As we come around to collect the first lap in the books of this one, I am keeping an eye on Noah Ferguson, who is already up to 27th after being second last. That is 39 on the opening lap. He has got a lot of work ahead of him, but I am impressed with this ride so far. Again, Kaneminia was very strong in moto number one, finding some good lines, but eventually Connolly just started to stretch it out. Right on the edge early. Yeah, on the edge, trying to find some good lines. And how about this corner, how it's all been cleaned up? It just opens that corner right up. Oh, what a move by Byron Dennis. Squared it up on the flat turn there. Got some great drive and makes the pass on the Yamaha rider of Caleb Barham, the 16 machine. Dennis, a rider that is so strong on these bikes, especially late in the motos. A little bit of a moment there, but I'll tell you what, he's looking quick at the moment. Just see the difference in the lines. He was quick going into it, doing the double-double, but not always the quickest of lines through the turns. Coming on the back of King, who is that? That there is Jai Constantino. A great ride from Jai up now into the top 10. So, yeah, we haven't seen Jai Constantino too much up there in the top 10. Haruki Yokoyama trying to go around the outside, but Reese Bart keeps oh, that position. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Was that Ken Roxon? Haruki! Did, what did we just see? Where did that come from? Wow! What a pass right there. That was fantastic by Haruki Yokoyama. Kept it so low, kept so much more speed into that ramp. All right. Here we go. Watch to the outside here for the red bike. Oh, oh my Lord. That was... I haven't seen a scrub like that on Australian soil for a long time. That was classy right there. Reese Butter watched that back and go, no way. How did that happen? Man, that was a good one, Haruki. Well done, buddy. Moves himself up one more place into seven. Really impressed with the way Haruki's been riding recently. The pass has been made by Byron Dennis up into second over Caden Minia. Just a better drive across that finish line area and then got himself. Oh, no. No, can you believe what we just saw? Oh, Dennis, uh, after all that effort. After such an awesome charge, puts the bike down. Unfortunately for him, devastating news for the Gas Gas rider. And that's the, uh, the exact thing that you spoke of. Here we go, watch the front wheel, the Byron Dennis, the leader of these two. Just as we get to the exit of this, pushes through. Actually, he's a bit low in the corner. Well, he tipped that in like it yeah. was a magazine cover shot. And it just, I, th I think that burn, that rust, just a little bit on the fragile side. He has yep. completely pushed that through there. Um, you can't doubt him with commitment. That was a, that oh, yeah. was absolute full commitment with the corner. It just, I think, a little bit too much trust in a soft run. Yeah. So that's um, Connor Adams.
one of our Victorian riders. Oh, no. Ooh, a little bit of a tag in the back. Look at that, Haruki. Don't go do that after uh, such a beautiful scrub earlier on. Yeah, so they're just trying to make their way through that lap rider that was down and just went into the back wheel. So he's got all of that work once again to do to try and catch back up to these riders in front of him. But it is Connolly that is leading this one by an eternity. Just approaching the halfway mark here of the Pirelli MX2 Moto number two. And it continues to be Brody Connolly on board the factory Honda machine. He has got himself a handy 14 second gap as we have a look here at the excursion off the side of the track yep. from number seven, Jace Cosford. Did yep. the right thing, hand up, slowed down, perfect way to do it. Yeah, so now that I've seen that uh, replay, he actually had a moment in the corner itself. His left leg was completely off the bike. I think maybe he tucked the front a little bit in that rut and just set himself up to go around the track. So be uh, perfectly done, didn't gain anything, let the other rider through. That is absolutely acceptable. But unfortunately for him, he did drop that one place. Nicely bounced over that last jump there by Ferguson. Gets him a nice clean run into that turn. Oh, how's the turn by Haruki Akiyama? Up the inside from absolutely nowhere. Oh, yeah, Barham had to back out of that one because he was forced off the track and he is no way he could have made that pass. Oh, oh come together. Ferguson, wasting no time, wants to get this pass made. He's got no time for this. He wants to get past. He was looking at a at a battle and attempted pass on Haruki Yokoyama. And then next thing, Haruki just drops a bomb onto Kayla Barham. That was amazing. Ride of the day so far. Here we go. Watch to the outside, switches back to the inside. And then Haruki oh. absolutely muscling his way with all that 20 kilograms of body weight that he has and pushes his way through to that position. Fantastic. Just, just tucked his right elbow in under, almost towards the ribs, so that he didn't tangle with Caleb Barham. Noah Ferguson slamming through those bumps, just no finesse, just as fast as he can charge through them. He's got a mission, and that mission is number 16, Caleb Barham. Flies around the outside. This is such a good line, how low you stay there, and I believe he's almost going to round him up here. Swooping. Oh, oh that is a massive, massive crash from Reese Budd. And number 60, Brock Flynn, have gone down together. Both look to be unscathed and uninjured, which is great news. Well, that was a uh, quick pick up there. Here we go. Watch for the replay. So, oh, that's, well, that's an interesting one. Oh, that was all Brock Flynn and just unexpected. Did he just? Unintentional, yeah. Just that hit. had a, a kick back in off a bump. That was weird crash. Now, the battle, though, still charging between these two as Ferguson mounts another challenge on this fifth place position. Ferguson, again, as we said, from almost dead last in the first turn. Last lap board is out. He will pull up right beside Barham here. But Barham jumps into the corner, not quite close enough at the moment, swings around the outside. <laughs> there's lines, there's a couple of good lines there. I really like where Ferguson was going, but Barham wasn't having a bar of it. Here we go, the step down jump. We are on the final lap. Ferguson looks at the outside, tries to square it back with a nice run. Oh, Barham is all over it. Cuts down. Oh, how's the rev tune? That's anger. That is, yep. That's pure anger right there from Noah Ferguson. But you know what? He's not doing anything wrong. Nope. Caleb Barham's not doing anything wrong. He's not purposely getting defensive and chopping side to side. He's holding his line. And Noah Ferguson has the speed to get past. you just got to make it happen. So final lap desperation here for Ferguson if he wants to do it. But this guy here, we haven't seen a lot of him for the entire race. What do you think his heart rate's at? Oh, 30, 70, 72? Uh, oh, 30, all right, yeah, okay. Yeah, he's doing it. Look, he's sitting out. He's, he's out to dinner somewhere. That's a walk in the park. Yeah, this guy is an exceptional rider here this year in the Pro MX Championship MX2 class. Absolute sensation so far and showing a clean set of heels today. He will pick up a perfect score until he gets through these last couple of turns. Now I'm going to say, Danny, 
They were talking about on the start line how they made a couple of changes. We got a similar gap from the first race, but I reckon he's done it easier this time. Whatever you did, guys, take a bow. Congratulations. Two wins from two starts and massively stretching out the championship points lead once again. Brody Connolly takes Moto 2 of the Pirelli MX2 class here today at Gilman. All right, let's take a look at the Pirelli MX2 results. Moto 2. Brody Connolly with a substantial win over Caden Minia. A good ride in second place. Ryder Kingsford in third. Ricky Akiyama with quite possibly one of the races of the day. Noah Ferguson, another one of the races of, of the day. Caleb Barham, Jace Cosford, Jai Constantino. That's a fantastic performance. As two for Bailey Malkowitz, Travis Olander as well. Take a bow. Top 10 for all of them riders. Byron Dennis, Alex Larwood from near last place as well. Campbell Williams, the list goes on. Reed Taylor a little bit further back than what we expected. Reese Budd after that small crash. Brock Flynn was with him. Ryan King, who was up there early, I was going to bring it up that he was uh, off the side of the track at one point. So unfortunate for him, that great start. And we go down the Cape with our top three. In P3 for the round, Noah Ferguson. Wow, what an insane charge for from you from the back of the pack. Uh, talk us through your race. Yeah, I had a first term mishap. I um, went down and started from last so I'm getting kind of sick of it it's the old tricks but yeah I rode good uh, not sure what I come in that moto but I uh, fought hard so that's the main thing congratulations um, still got on the podium still important points so we'll see you at Maitland yeah definitely so important points but uh, man that points lead is getting big so but the main thing is um, on the box so um, yeah massive shout out to the team boost mobile Honda HRC and everything else that goes with it so um, we'll be head down bum up for the rest of the season Great work. Okay, in P2 for the round, Caden Minier, congratulations, a whole shot. Bit of redemption from Moto1, but your best result since coming back from injury, so you've got to be proud of that. Yeah, definitely. It's been a long time coming since the injury. Um, I feel like this sport's been kicking me in the bum lately, but I get back up and I keep going. Um, I wouldn't be here without the team's help. Um, I'm so happy to be up here. It's been a long time, so, yeah, hopefully we can get some more podiums this season. 100%. It's great to see you up here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And in P1, an absolute masterclass from Brody Connolly. Uh, congratulations, um, a really solid effort this weekend. I guess those changes to your bike helped? Yeah, yeah, we changed a little bit before that one and yeah, I was a lot more comfy in that one as people could probably see. So yeah, can't get much better day than that, first in qualifying and then two moto wins. So yeah, that's what we work hard for during the week, so I'm stoked. Yeah, well, you've got a scary points lead in this championship. We'll see you in Maitland. Cheers. Well, there you have it, our podium, the first, second and third. It's all about Brody Connolly at the moment on board the Polyfloor Honda machine. Well, make sure you join us May the 6th as we head to the hard pack and ruddy Maitland circuit just under an hour's drive from Newcastle for round four of the Penrite Oils Pro MX Championship brought to you by AMX Superstores. And while you're at it, make sure you lock in round four of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motul as it heads next to Morgan Park Raceway in Queensland from July the 12th to the 14th. Well, Gilman never disappoints. And what a spectacle we've seen here in Adelaide for round three of the Penrod Oils Pro MX Championships brought to you by AMX Superstores. Thanks so much for joining us. On behalf of Danny Ham, Kate Peck and myself, Lee Hogan, thanks for your company. We'll see you next at Maitland, New South Wales for round four of the championship, May the 26th. Goodbye for now.